Apple's M4 MacBook Pro is finally here and today we're gonna answer the most important question that people have. Is this upgrade, the M4, finally as good as the original legendary M1 where Apple embarrassed Intel? Well, the M4 is a pretty dang good upgrade, so we're gonna find out in this video by testing everything that we can, including the speakers, design differences, SSD speed, performance, thermal throttling, and much more, so let's get started. All right, let's get the M3 out of the way. By the way, I have it charging 100%. We're gonna do a battery test in this video. M4 chip, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, base, $1,600 price, incredible value from Apple. And here we go, side by side, we have the M4 on the left, the M3 on the right, both at 100%, so let me unplug the MagSafe chargers. So we're gonna be doing that battery life test, and let's jump right into it. First of all, I have the spec sheet for you guys, so you can see that the new M4 comes with 16 gigs of RAM, but otherwise, the same price, same everything, base models. Now before we dig in, the only difference in terms of the design is that previous Obviously, there was no USB-C or Thunderbolt port on the right side. Now we do have a port, it's so convenient to have it on the right side. But what I want to do right now is actually close these down, flip them over, and take a look at the internals to see if anything changed on the inside. And moment of truth, let's see if we see any changes. First of all, we got the speakers, and to me, they look identical, no differences. Let's take a look at the battery right here. Looks like we have 72.6 watt hours on the M4, so about 5% bigger than the M3. And honestly, everything else looks the same. The cooling system, the, the thermal uh, heat pipe, everything, the fan. Now that we got them put back together, the first thing I wanna do is our infamous speaker comparison. Let me know your thoughts down below on which one sounds better, but to me, I think the mids on the new M4 are a little bit louder than the M3. Now, in terms of features, the new MacBook Pros, all the new M4 models have the center stage 12 megapixel webcam. And here you can see kind of how center stage is working. You can see that on the left, I'll click continue, center stage is actually kind of adjusting to show my face. I'm st sitting in the middle of both of them. This one, you could barely see my head peeking out if I stand up. You guys should be able to see it follows me around the room. And then there is a new display upgrade in terms of the actual maximum brightness. Now, when you have it set to manual brightness, you turned off automatic adjustment mode. It's the same 600 nits. I'm gonna turn on automatically adjust the brightness, which it did kind of turn down, but watch as I put my flash. Look at that. It just got insanely bright. Max, you seeing that? Yeah. Much brighter on the left, a thousand nits. And now with that said, let's get into our performance testing. The first thing we're gonna do is do an SSD test. We have the same 512, but take a look at this. We have better write speeds on the M4, 3400 compared to 2800, while the read is pretty much the same 2900. Wow, Apple actually improved the write speeds of the SSD. Moving on, we have Geekbench 6. I'm gonna do a CPU test. You can see we have 16 gigs of RAM on the new M4 model compared to eight, and the M3 was 4.05 gigahertz. This one is 4.41, so we have a nice boost in clock speed, and we also have two extra E cores so 10 total, four performance, six efficiency compared to four and four on the M3. We got our scores and wow, Max, take a look. This is Man. almost 4,000 single core, 21% faster than the M3, which is big. Biggest difference we've had in a while and 26% for multi-core, 15,000 points. That's basically almost matching the previous M3 Pro fully featured unbend 12-core version in the base M4 for 1600. 
That's insane performance. Now, what does that mean in the real world? Well, we have Speedometer 3.0 right here, which kind of gives you a good sense of the web browsing performance and snappiness. And dang, 47.3. That is the highest score that I've ever seen in this test. 12.6% faster than the M3. And an even better way to test the real world performance is with Figma Web Design. This is a project provided to us by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios based out of Cali. And what we're gonna do is test how quickly things load. So first of all, I'm gonna go over here to services and let's just zoom in on this image and see, oh, that was super, super snappy on the M3. It already was super fast for doing this kind of stuff. And just like that, just as fast. But the real test is to export some of these pages. So I'm going to select them right over here. As you can see, I have 12 selected. I'm gonna export a PNG, 4X quality, and see how much faster the M4 is. And it looks like surprisingly not that big of a difference. The M3 with eight gigs of RAM took a minute and 40 seconds compared to a minute and 31, just nine seconds faster. Honestly, I was expecting more, but let's do some more testing. But first, let me give a huge shout out to our sponsor, TomTalk, with their 360 degree protective laptop sleeve. This thing is perfect for the new M4 MacBook Pro and a super soft lease interior lining. On top of that, it has corner armor, so it has these sturdy corners, perfect fit. It overlaps it, nice and protected. Not only that, you have this zipper pocket. You could put your charger or anything else, zip it up. They also have a version for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. TomTalk also offers a wide range of laptop bags as well. So definitely use the link down in the description below to order yours today. Now let's move on to graphics. This is Geekbench 6 again. And the cool thing here is we still have the same 10 core GPU. So it'll be interesting to see how much the actual architecture itself improved in terms of the GPU. And look at that, 57,830 compared to 49,831. That's 16% faster with the same 10 cores. That's a nice update because usually Apple adds 20% more cores to get 20% more performance. This time we're actually getting better architecture. Now, since Geekbench is more of a synthetic benchmark, there's 3D Mark, which has a new Steel Nomad Lite test, which simulates real AAA gaming performance. So let's go ahead and run this on both of them. And look at that 30 FPS on the M4 compared to 25.1. That's 20% higher FPS. That's actually really interesting because in Geekbench Metal, it was only 16% better. Now it's 20, which means something in there is making gaming related tasks perform better. And actually I decided to run that test again because I wanted to see the GPU wattage, how much power it takes. And it peaked up to, whoa, look at that, 20 watts on the M4, whereas we only got around 15, 16 maybe on the M3. So it is using quite a bit more power. So I double checked, it was 20 watts maximum GPU on the M4 compared to 15. That's 33% more power with the same 10 GPU cores. So they are pushing more power to get that extra performance. And now Apple did say that they improved the ray tracing performance, potentially upgrading the actual ray tracing cores themselves. So this is Solar Bay Unlimited on both of them. And we're gonna see how much GPU wattage they take because it should take less since it's relying on the dedicated hardware. So far I saw it go up to 19.6, oh, 19 20. 20.3 watts, oh, it's going up 20.7, almost 21 on the M4 compared to, I think it only peaked at like close to 16. So similar wattages on both of these. We got the scores and it looks like it's even better, 22.3% faster with the M4. So the ray tracing cores have definitely been improved. And now let's switch back to the CPU. This is Cinebench 2024. We're gonna do a multi-core test. That's 10 minutes to test throttling. We got our Seek thermal camera right here, ready to go. So let's go ahead and begin. Now I'm gonna open up MX Power Gadget once again to monitor the power. Right away, I see a difference. We're at 22 package power already on the M4 compared to 18. So 22 right there, CPU, and it's cranking up now 21. It's catching up on the M3. I can see that the E-Core frequency on the M4 is higher, 2.81. 
compared to 2.75. And right now the P-Core frequency is 3.89, 3.94 on the M4 compared to 3.64. It's actually not reaching that 4.4 because we're using all of the P-Cores at once. And when you do that, you don't get that highest peak performance. It cuts down when you spread across all of them. And dang, look at that, 102 degrees Celsius on both of them already. The fan speed, 4200 cranking up on the M4 faster than the M3 and you can see on the M3 3700 RPM compared to 5300 I can audibly hear it louder on the M4 and of course that's because it's using more power 24 CPU I just saw compared to 20 and it's almost maxing out the fans right now. Meanwhile, the M3 is about halfway compared to the maximum 6800 RPM. Wow, I can't believe the fans are already maxed out. I almost feel like they should add in that second fan in this base model, which you guys know, the higher end $2,000 model with the M4 Pro, that comes with dual fans and it has for years. The M4 is now getting fast enough to where it might need that. However, we are maxing out the fans, but we're still sticking to 102 degrees Celsius. Usually about 108 is the limit to where you'll start seeing thermal throttling, and then the performance clock speed starts coming down, but it's actually staying very well balanced here. And by the way, this is TG Pro, it's a great app. Thank you to the developer helping us because he just updated a brand new version for us to get this working. It's been over eight minutes out of 10. I have my Seek Thermal camera right here. Let's look at the hottest point on the M4 MacBook Pro. Look at that, 36 degrees Celsius right there. And interestingly, there's another hot point right there. That's where the fan is actually blowing out the hot air. So 36 degrees Celsius on the M4 compared to, ooh, 35 looks like the hottest that I'm getting right there where the chip is at. Let's look at the heat. Oh, look at that, 36 degrees coming out of the uh, exhaust vent. So very, very similar, slightly hotter on the M4. I almost feel like this thing is perfectly balanced because the fan is maxed out. We're only getting 102 degrees Celsius instead of 108, and we're not heat soaking the chassis, so there's zero throttling whatsoever. But beware, because if you add graphics to the mix, like in some tasks that use both CPU and GPU at the same time, you might actually get some throttling. And Apple has to think of something because if the M5 chip takes more power, we might see some throttling on this. And one thing I know for sure is that this is no longer a super silent machine. It is so much louder in terms of the fans because it only has that single fan, so definitely a bit louder. We're done and holy smokes, guys. 47% higher score on the M4, 955 points compared to 651 on the M3. That's a huge difference, 47% compared to Geekbench Multicore was only like, what, 25%? That's CPU rendering, that's a real world 100% workflow for 10 minutes. That's really impressive because if you look back at the M3 Pro chip, not the regular M3, M3 Pro Trip, the bend model got 865 points. That means this M4 is better than the bend M3 Pro by quite a bit. And the 16 inch unbend full 12 core M3 Pro got 1,010 points, just a little bit better than this. And that's a $2,500 machine. This thing's 1,600. That's impressive. Let's move on to some photo editing. This is a Lightroom Classic, and we should see a big difference here, especially with 16 gigs of base RAM on the M4. That matters a lot for photo editing tests like this compared to eight gigs. So let's go ahead and export 50 42 megapixel raw photos. Right off the bat, I'm seeing the GPU usage on the M4 spike up to as high as 10 watts for that GPU compared to here, I only saw about seven, 7.6. Same thing for the CPU, about 17 watts here compared to only about 15, and it is flying. Oh my goodness, wow, that's fast. All right, it is finished. Holy smokes, that's almost twice as fast. The M4 took only 52 seconds compared to a minute and 30 on the base 
M3. That is insane. I'm pretty sure that's faster than the best M3 Pro. So I just checked the scores on the 14 inch, 16 inch M3 Pro, both the 11 core bend and the full 12 core. They both took 45 seconds. This took 52. A $1,600 base model M4 MacBook Pro almost as fast. The value that you're getting this year is immense. All right, guys, I'm already seeing a pretty big difference in battery life. But before I show you guys the results, let's do an export test in Final Cut Pro. This is essentially gonna test if the actual media encoders themselves got faster because from the M1 to the M2 to the M3, they were exactly the same, no differences. Of course, if you go with the Max chip and then the Ultra, you have more of them so they can work together to export faster but they never got improved. Let's actually test it out. Bam, timer has started. This is gonna be a close one. I see a little bit of a difference, but it's trailing behind. This right here is interesting, guys. I thought it would use less GPU if the encoders were the limitation, but it's using more of the GPU on the M4, which means it's matching up with faster encoders, seemingly. And the M4 is done. We still gotta wait on the M3. Wow, finally, guys, we've just confirmed that the M4 chip has faster HEVC and H.264 encoders. Look at that. Two minutes and one second on the M4 compared to two minutes and 30 seconds on the M3, which is actually the same as the M2 and the M1. All right, so we've just finished a bunch of testing. It's actually been three hours and 20 minutes of high performance testing and everything. Let's finally take a look at the battery life because this is gonna be the moment of truth to see just how worth it or how great of an upgrade the M4 is. First of all, the M3, let's look at the battery life. 34%, okay, remember heavy testing. The M4, 46%, what? Wow. I can't believe it because first of all, we've been getting a lot better performance with the M4. Up to 22% better in terms of graphics with that ray tracing solar bay test, up to 47% better for Cinebench multi-core stress test. And keep in mind, it uses more power, more wattage for all of those tests. Somehow, it's coming out ahead. Can you believe that? Why is that? Well the two extra e-cores, those things are doing work. So guys, this is such a big upgrade for 1600 bucks with 16 gigs of RAM. If you've been waiting to upgrade since the M1 series of MacBooks or Macs, this is it. This is finally a big enough upgrade and value with performance that's almost as good as $2,500 previous gen Max. Apple, thank you for finally giving us some crazy good value, especially this machine, especially the Mac Mini, which we just tore down in the previous video and saw the craziness in terms of their engineering. Definitely watch that video and subscribe above because we're gonna be doing a lot more testing with the M4 Pro Mac Mini, the M4 Pro MacBooks, the M4 Max. It's about to go down, so hopefully you enjoy this video. We'll see you in the next one.